Welcome to the lecture series on vitamins and nutrition. Today we are going to look at one of the uh, important components of a vitamin. Although this does not come under the category of vitamin, yet we are going to look at this particular component because it forms one of the major uh, coenzyme factor complex and this particular component is basically lipoic acid. So, in today's topic we are going to look at what this lipoic acid is all about and uh, we are going to look at what its biological role, what is the source and what kind of metabolic action it participates and also we are going to look at its absorption distribution and finally into its applications, therapeutic applications and as a application in terms of being used as a supplement along with vitamins. So, what this lipoic acid is all about? So, this is basically a compound as you look over here, it is a alpha lipoic acid and it is also known as ALA. It is basically a thiotic acid, it means it is a compound which contains sulphur and it will be more appropriate to call it as an organo sulphur compound. And if you look at the structure of lipoic acid, the parent compound it, it is basically a octanoic acid. It means it contains 8 carbon atom linear acid, it is a aliphatic acid, it is a long chain aliphatic acid and it is a linear long chain aliphatic acid with the disulfide ring system. And if you look at lipoic acid, normally it is been designated as ALA, alpha lipoic acid and it is one of the normal constituents of animals. The problem here is we do synthesize alpha lipoic acid to whatever need that we have, but at times we might additionally need alpha lipoic acid to supplement certain functions. Although we can synthesize this particular component as part of our endogenous metabolic system, yet taking it from a dietary source would also be a good suggestion because some of the fat soluble vitamins if you look at you do have a propensity to synthesize, but not all and uh, in most of the vitamins we are completely dependent on dietary sources. We do not synthesize to a level where we can uh, replenish the normal need. But as far as lipoic acid is concerned, our body can sustain, but it is also taken as a dietary supplement. So, this one basically lies somewhere between a vitamin and an endogenously synthesized component. So, if you look at how this particular component came into play with lots of studies, right now the demand for lipoic acid has increased, especially if there is a problem connected with metabolic disorders. So, we are going to look at the physical and chemical properties of lipoic acid. So, if you look at this structure, it is a very interesting structure. So, you see a long chain acid, octanoic acid and you find here two disulfide bridges being formed. So, you see there at carbon 6 and carbon 8, you have two sulfur groups and they are connected by a disulfide bond and this is considered to be oxidized. So, if you could look at the oxidized version, if it is a reduced version you will have an SH a thiol group, but in an oxidized version, version you have a disulfide bond. So, you look at this particular compound and uh, carbon 6, okay. so the carbon at the carbon 6 you can have two enantiomers, it is a stereoisomer and you can have the R plus or the S minus lipoic acid. And if you look at this, you can have a racemic mixture of R and S lipoic acid. And uh, if you have to look into the physical property of this particular compound, you see it is a yellow colored compound and uh, you have a terminal carboxylic group. And in the 6th and 8th as I have told you, contains the sulfur atom in an oxidized form. So, this is the simple molecule. So, you might think it is very easy to synthesize chemically, yes it is commercially synthesized nowadays, 
uh, the demand for lipoic acid is missed, met through chemical synthesis. Although there are dietary supplements through which lipoic acid can be supplied, yet right now considering the demand and the ease of synthesis, lipoic acid is mostly synthesized as a pharmaceutical nutraceutical ingredient. Now, if you look at the structure of lipoic acid, that is quite interesting because of the sulphur group and the long chain carbon atom, they have a water soluble as well as a fat soluble entity. So, this is categorized as a antioxidant molecule. So, that way you find alpha lipoic acid as a counterpart between a water soluble component and a fat soluble component. So, if you ask me whether the alpha lipoic acid can cross the blood brain barrier, yes it is possible, it can cross the blood brain barrier and it has been proved through experiments that it has crossed the blood brain barrier and it is been used as a supplement in many degenerative diseases. And we are going to look at that particular property shortly. Now we will see the different forms of alpha lipoic acid. As I have told you, alpha lipoic acid is available in the synthetic form and it is also available in the natural form. So, the alpha lipoic acid is basically the R form or the S form or the racemic form RS. So, the natural form is basically the R form, whereas the synthesized version is a combination of racemic mixture and the S form. Although the R form alpha lipoic acid is considered to be more active biologically, uh, taking a racemic combination is equally good and a pure alpha compound has less stability compared to the racemic mixture. So, racemic mixture is what is being commercially made available in the form of a supplementary tablet in conditions where the demand for lipoic acid is more, especially if there are underlying metabolic disorders like diabetes. Now, we are going to go one by one into the biological role of lipoic acid. So, if you look at lipoic acid, it is a conjugate base of lipoic acid. See, whenever you look at a word like lipoate, acetate, pyruvate, it means it is an ionized form, it is a conjugate form of the protonated version of the corresponding acid. And the most prevalent form is basically the lipoate form under physiological conditions because it would be deprotonated under the physiological conditions. So, that is why we use this word lipoate. But endogenously produced the RLA form are not free because octanoic acid, the precursor of RLA is bound to the enzyme complex prior to enzymatic insertion of the sulfur atom. So, if you look into the biological synthesis of how uh, lipoic acid is synthesized and released into its function, so we find this particular compound RLA does not exist in the free form. It is normally complexed along with other protons and it is most likely to be very closely associated with lysine. So, we could now very well consider lipoic acid as a cofactor where all the vitamins in this regard also has the resemblance to cofactor. So, that is one of the reason why lipoic acid can be considered as a quasi vitamin we say a kind of a partial vitamin because of its cofactor nature, but not could be given a full uh, weightage as a vitamin because you do not have well pronounced deficiency diseases. Rather, the lipoic acid show deficiency disease in conditions where the demand for lipoic acid in metabolic conditions could be high. So, you look at this RLA as being covalently attached by an amide linkage to a terminal lysine residue of the enzymes lipoyl domains. You remember I told just now how lysine as an amino acid is linked with RLA and you find here it is through an amide linkage to the terminal lysine residue of the corresponding enzymes lipoyl domain you find LA being closely associated. 
and uh, whenever we speak of RLA alpha lipoic acid you have to remember a very important enzyme complex that is pyruvate dehydrogenase complex system. I do have a picture about it we are going to see that shortly. So, first I thought I can enlist the functions its biological role then probably we can dwell deep into the functions. So, I am going to uh, talk about this pyruvate dehydrogenase complex because if you recollect we have done in the earlier series of how thiamine is a cofactor in the activation of this complex along with thiamine you find alpha lipoic acid playing an essential role. So, can you identify there is a clue suppose if there is any metabolic conditions associated with glycolytic pathway or mitochondrial damage and there is a restoration process obviously lipoic acid will also play a role because for many of the enzyme complexes it is an important cofactor along with other essential cofactors. So, only the R plus enantiomer exists in nature. So, that is what we have seen in the previous slide the R form especially the enantiomer exists in the natural form. And in some of the microorganisms it is called uh, the pyruvate oxidation factor. In fact, that is how historically this particular component was elucidated through its role in the metabolic function. And uh, if you look at the aerobic metabolism process this is a essential cofactor. So, many enzyme complexes connected with aerobic metabolism obviously would use RLA the enantiomer version of it. And in many of the microbes you find them uh, this particular RLA uh, being used directly in the mitochondrial pathway. If you look at the sources of food yes you do have very good source a wide variety. So, you need not actually go for a dietary supplement if you are already a healthy person and if your metabolic system would demand more amount of this particular quasi vitamin requirement you can always supplement through dietary sources. And as I told you earlier since it is bound with lysine in the proteins you could always expect this particular lipoic acid nutraceutical ingredient being closely associated with organs like kidney, heart, liver, spinach, broccoli and yeast extract. So, conversely if you could keep this meat or organ products as a source for lipoic acid very well they could be used as a dietary supplement. And if you look at the natural occurrence of lipoic acid it is not readily available in the dietary sources. So, what do you mean by that? In some of the conditions with water soluble vitamins or lipid soluble vitamins with little processing you are able to make this particular vitamin available and especially when taken in its natural form as fresh vegetables these vitamins are readily available. Although in all these natural substances you do have lipoic acid occurrence the dietary release of lipoic acid is limited because it is covalently bound with lysine residues in all these sources. And uh, you do have the dietary supplements relatively if you pull them up and if you look at how much would be the presence of lipoic acid as such in all these uh, I would say prospective dietary products it is definitely a condition where you always expect them in low amount. So, probably when we are going to have a balanced diet with all these uh, vegetables and fruits then we could still supplement lipoic acid, but we need not worry much because we do also synthesize lipoic acid to some extent and it since an essential cofactor we always need a replenishing source and some of the sources already met through a dietary needs what we take in our routine uh, vegetable collection that we have on a regular basis. So, you look at this picture you have spinach, broccoli, tomatoes are being rich in lipoic acid. You also have yeast extract, 
rice bran can you make a can you identify a condition because most of the b vitamins are also present in the sources that i mentioned just now and in addition to that you also have vegetables like potato bone broth organ meat they are also rich in lipoic acid so you see there it's widely distributed in a variety of food sources thereby you would be able to really get benefited when people have an assorted version of dietary choices that would really blend variety of nutrients from different sources of food now let's look at the absorption and distribution of lipoic acid so we saw the r alpha lipoic acid isomer it's quite unstable at a temperature above 49 so it means you are going to cook it at a good temperature you might actually lose alpha lipoic acid from the dietary sources you procure them so in this context the supplementary sources which are synthetically made i told you because the synthetic method of lipoic acid production mostly results in the l isomer and racemic mixture so since the racemic mixture proportion is also equally present in the synthetic mode we can very well make use of that source as a biological supplementation if at all there is a need for lipoic acid in certain degenerative diseases so the good thing is that when you are going to use a racemic mixture it's quite stable at a temperature of 60 to 62 so that way for people who take the supplement of racemic mixture of uh, the lipoic acid can still be benefited because the shelf life is better and uh, the stability profile is also good at a higher temperature now if you look at some of the studies conducted in the pharmacokinetic profile so what do you mean by pharmacokinetic profile for any drug molecule before you could market the drug molecule for specific applications or as a therapeutic mode people do conduct the study as to how this particular drug goes into systemic circulation depending on the route of administration so we take into consideration the absorption distribution metabolism and elimination of a drug and this will help us to understand exactly what's going on when you're going to consume this particular medicine as a supplement either in the form of a nutraceutical or in the form of a drug additive now you look at this you have alpha lipoic acid isomer as a higher level of absorption that's interesting right so the isomer yes form you do have that in percentage so there would be a relative combination of r alpha lipoic acid and the s form so you see there the presence of it would prevent the polymerization of r alpha l form so thereby we could say the presence of s as a component would actually stabilize the way in which lipoic acid absorption happens although the uh, l uh, r alpha form is basically more uh, prone for a better levels of absorption yet considering the stability feature of s contribution or role we could say the racemic mixture is supposed to be a good dietary supplement now that's one of the reason why we use the r and s isomer and uh, we basically use this as a important component to supplement the racemic mixture which has been commercially made available now looking at how you could uh, consider absorption and elimination the normal route of elimination is through kidneys the renal route of elimination and we saw that lipoic acid has a amphiphilic character what do you mean by amphiphilic character it has both the lipophilic and hydrophilic character so the alpha lipoic acid is widely distributed because of its amphiphilic character and it gets compartmentalized in different uh, body components okay including cns 
and that's one of the reason we are going to see shortly how lipoic acid plays a very important role in terms of its uh, contribution in the degenerative diseases like Alzheimer's diseases, then conditions like multiple sclerosis where lots of degenerative changes happen in the brain. And you look at this particular picture, alpha lipoic acid, the mean time to reach plasma peak concentration. So, this is one parameter we use to check how much amount of the vitamin supplement that you take would go into systemic circulation after you consume it either from a dietary source that is basically from a natural source and you can also consider how you could take up any kind of supplement in the form of a tablet or in the form of a suspension that could reach the systemic circulation. So, the mean plasma of life is probably for about 14 minutes ok. So, although it looks like uh, it is very brief yet being it is an amphiphilic component it is being able to get compartmentalized and distributed widely throughout our body. Now, we are going to look at the applications of lipoic acid. So, it is a very uh, interesting application. So, you look at there the lipoic acid although our body can synthesize by dietary supplementation in the range of 200 to 600 milligram has actually been regularly taken as found to be very beneficial for people who have an underlying disease especially conditions like diabetes. So, I would like to highlight a particular condition called diabetic neuropathy ok. So, in this particular condition lipoic acid is an officially uh, chosen supplement and in Germany it is actually given as a drug for therapy to treat diabetic neuropathy. Even in India uh, many of diabetic tablets come in combination with lipoic acid. So, that way it has been uh, promoted from being in the status of a nutritive supplement to the state of being used as a drug to treat specific condition. So, the absorption is quite variable because the kind of food we take the contents would vary and as I told you earlier since they are covalently uh, connected uh, releasing them in the appropriate quantity would be variable depending on the diet the person would take. So, you might consider it could take probably 30 to 60 minutes ok up to 120 minutes after a meal the drug would the vitamin supplement would reach systemic circulation. You could have this particular component being metabolized in the liver and the free form would be made available in circulation so that it can get distributed across tissues. So, what exactly this diabetic neuropathy is all about? So, this is a condition especially it is a metabolic condition connected with diabetes. If you look at the symptoms like how a person would feel like when they suffer from diabetic uh, neuropathy. As you look at the word neuropathy means a pathology or pathos pain connected with neurons. So, people who have this condition and most of the diabetic people will eventually end up in diabetic neuropathy it will be always a background uh, pricking sensation. So, you have a kind of a pricking sensation in the peripheries especially in the fingertips in the feet and uh, they will have a kind of a sensation as if they are walking on sharp objects and kind of a tingling sensation in the periphery and these are some of the preliminary symptoms of neuropathy and if left unchecked. So, in this context they are given supplements of vitamin B12 and lipoic acid along with vitamin B series and especially B12 lipoic acid forms the main line of therapy to treat diabetic neuropathy and many clinical trials have suggested that taking this lipoic acid as a supplement as part of dietary medicines uh, used to treat and maintain diabetes people have shown very good improvement and alleviation of these symptoms or probably you can say depending upon the extent of neuronal damage at least if you could not completely reverse the condition you can prevent further deterioration and for people who have uncontrolled diabetes taking lipoic acid supplement has definitely improved all the symptoms 
that would otherwise result in severe complications. Now, we are going to look at little more of the applications of lipoic acid. Now, if you look at exactly what kind of function they do play, if you mechanistically look in the cellular level, how this lipoic acid is able to exhibit uh, its function, biological role. So, we could attribute the dithiolate ring. So, the sulfur atoms con for a very high electron density to alpha lipoic acid. So, the key lying over here is because of the dithiolate ring and you know very well many such dithiolate systems like glutathione, thyroidoxin all tend to have some kind of antioxidant role. So, that what makes lipoic acid as a vitamin component as a supplement and as a quasi vitamin component and for all the roles that they play. And if you recollect, I told you shortly I am going to explain about its role in um, pyruvate oxidation system. So, this is the picture I was trying to explain. So, if you look at this connection of how pyruvic acid would enter the citric acid cycle, there is an intermediate step. What we look at this particular step is a particular enzyme complex called pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex and it consists of many cofactor system that would help oxidize pyruvate into acyl CoA. Similarly, you also have for alpha keta glutorate. So, it is all keto acids, then you get oxidize them into a succinyl CoA. Okay. So, you see there this particular step is very crucial in the metabolic role of mitochondria, how the aerobic system could kick start. And uh, this is the picture we look at here as a cofactor for an enzyme complexes in this particular step which is popularly known as the oxidative phosphorylation process. So, you have this pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme system where you have other components like dihydrolipoamide acyl transferase chain. So, similarly same kind of a system you could expect for alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase and all this play a very essential role. So, that is one of the reason you need to look at how essential they are in exhibiting the metabolic role in mitochondria and I am going to finally conclude its role in the degenerative disease okay, where you have uh, conditions like Alzheimer's diseases where it has been really used as a supplement because they can cross the blood brain barrier and a unique uptake profile has been shown and an improvement in the central and peripheral nervous system symptoms connected with degenerative conditions. Because of its amphiphilic nature, amphiphilic nature is they have the lipophilic nature so they can easily cross the blood brain barrier and accumulate over there in performing the function. So, we are going to conclude today's session. Uh, so, as a summary uh, what we saw, we saw the role of lipoic acid, uh, how lipoic acid acts like a quasi vitamin although it does not have the full designation of a classical vitamin, but its role as a cofactor in the pyruvate uh, oxidation system makes it a useful uh, component like a regular vitamin and the next difference is although dietary supplement is taken up still we can manage with lipoic acid and we do not have a direct deficiency, but taking supplements of lipoic acid in a degenerative condition and um, chronic illness like diabetes would definitely have a marked improvement in the nutritional status of a person. So, that is how we summarize and um, I would like to ask a question uh, as a recap of what we have done. So, write down the structure of lipoic acid and give its structure function role as to how lipoic acid is able to exhibit its, exhibit its role as a cofactor. So, that is the first question. Second question, you could list the dietary sources of lipoic acid and especially you can say what are the limitations uh, as far as the absorption of lipoic acid is concerned. The third question would be give the applications of lipoic acid in metabolic diseases and their role as an antioxidant enzyme. Thank you for your attention.